Okay, this is Spreadsheets Standard 4. We're going to talk about formulas and functions. First off, the difference between a formula and a function are with a formula, you write it yourself. So in this cell, C1, I want to make it equal, and I start off any formula with an equal sign so that Excel will know exactly what I'm doing. It knows I'm not just trying to put a number in here. I'm not trying to display some text. I'm going to turn this into a formula. So I can click on A1. And you can see that it puts this in here for me. I hit the plus key and I can click on B1 and now it's going to add up those two values. So anytime I want to make a formula, I just click this. I'm going minus A, yes, A2 and B2, zero. It works just like in your math when you use the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. If you make a complex formula, that's exactly what it will do. It will do those things in that particular order. So 3 times 3, this cell is equal to A1 divided by B1. Hit enter there. And finally, we're going to use to the power. So I'm going to press equals this cell. And then I use a shift 6. It's called a caret, but that just means it's to that power. So 5 to the fifth power gives us 3,125. So formulas are pretty easy to do. You just have to know how to write them and use the same parentheses setup that you would use in solving a math equation. A function differs from a formula in that the function is predefined. So I have a couple of them here I'll just show you on our home tab. If you come over to the editing group, here is some functions we have predefined. So I have the sum, the average, the count, max and min. I want to just get the sum of the numbers for Bob. So I've selected F2, and when I press this key here, it's going to add up everything that equals the sum of this range. I hit Enter. That tells me how many I have. I've added a new column in here. I've just put in returns. Sometimes people bring back merchandise. Uh, this will just act as a simple addition equation, but adding the negative number. So again, I can go to Auto Sum. I can sum this up. It tries to guess where I'm going. And there we go. So if I grab the fill handle, it's going to automatically fill that down for me. And it's going to know that I'm getting the stuff from each of these different rows. I can also do some predefined functions. Let's get the average. Let's figure in April what we had for the average. If I select this function, the average of B2 through B5 was 2.5. In May, maybe I needed to know the maximum. What was the most that got sold in May? That was three. And on these little data sets, it doesn't make much sense to do that. But on a really big data set, you may have trouble finding those numbers. And so Excel will do that for you rather quickly. It will tell you what you need. So it's pretty simple. And the way to tell them apart when you look in your formula bar is, is there a word here at the beginning? A formula will be something that you've written, uh, but the function is already built right in. And there are a lot of functions. We're not going to go into very many at all here but if we come in here you can see we have all sorts of things we can hyperlink we can count them we can use some logic which we're going to do in a little while um, when you get into statistics stu statistics i can't talk when you get into stats uh, you'll do things with standard deviations and t-tests and some other things but all these functions are in here for you uh, that just makes it easier because excel is great with working with numbers when we copy a cell that has a formula in it, as I'm going to do here, selecting E2 and E3, grab my fill handle, and I'm going to copy the values down here to E4 and E5. Excel is smart enough to know that it wants this formula to be relative to where we were on this row because these two formulas were also relative. So when I'm looking at these, it tells it, look, we're going to go on row 5, we're going to go on row 4. Row four. But what if I absolutely want it to just be this cell? I can change this here in my formula bar by putting a dollar sign. When I put the dollar sign in front of the B, that means that we're absolutely just going to be using that, um, that column. I put a dollar sign here and absolutely using that row. And we're absolutely using through D2. So now the number still looks the same. But if I copy my formula, let's do control C to copy my formula. And if I paste it down, I'm going to right click 
I'm going to paste down just the formula. So it is telling me, look, we're still just keeping the value of B2 and D2. Even though, relatively speaking, if we'd have just grabbed the fill handle, it would have pulled that down here. So, and you can see this would have added up to 7. So if you're going to be using um, absolute values, you kind of have to be careful. Uh, they can throw people off, but if you know what you're doing, then that's that's okay. Okay, I've undone those absolute cell values and gone back and replaced those with relative cell values so that we're getting the total for Ted and Alice and not just copying Bob and Carol down on top of them. Another way to use an absolute cell reference, if I'm pressing equals, I can make this equal to just this cell, and you see it's going to be equal to E2. And Excel is smart enough to know when I grab the fill handle, it wants to just have it relative to where it is, so it's going to drag my formula down one. Again, I could make it just equal to that one cell by putting the dollar sign in front of the column and a dollar sign in front of the row, and that locks in just that column and that row. So let's delete this, drag this down, and it tells me that it's absolutely just the value of E2. I've gone back to our larger data set so I can show you some logic functions. The first one I'm going to show you is count if. So I've added a column here, column F. I want to know how many of the kids in our sample data here have Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So those were all those were the the big five in the survey we took last year. So I'm going to come over here to this square. I'm just going to put the formula in here, and I can go to insert a function. And the function I'm looking for is called count if. So I want to count it if something happens. So here's count if. I click OK. And it asks me two questions. It asks me, what is my range? And so the range I'm searching for is just this column D, because that's where all my data is. And the criteria I'm looking for is Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. So I'm going to grab this cell. It's not letting me do that. Luckily, I copied down the text. I'm going to put this text into quotes so that it knows that it's not looking for a numerical value. When I click OK, it's going to tell me that there were 29 respondents in these 440-something that have all five of these accounts. So that's count if. It only counts them if they've got all of them. I'm going to go back to the smaller data set, and I'm going to use sum if. So I can insert a function in this cell, and I only want to add up the units sold any time a salesperson sold more than two. So I'm going to insert a function, and in up here I can type sum if to find my function. I'm going to enter this. I click OK. Now the range I want to know for April and the criteria is going to be greater than two units. So anything three and above will get counted. And so you can see that it ignored Bob and Carol because they did not sell more than two units, but it did add up the number we had for Ted and Alice. And we have seven. The last logical function I'm going to show you here is going to be average if. So for the month of May, I want to get the average of the sales if it was greater than one, so if they sold two or more. Again, I'm in my formulas. I'm going to go to insert function, and I can look it up. This is the average if. Click OK. So for my range of May, anytime a salesperson sold more than one unit. I'm going to throw this into the average, and I could ignore this bottom part here. I click it. I did some if. Well, that's a mistake right there. This is how easy it is to fix a formula. Let's just pretend I did that on purpose. Now it's going to just give me the total here of these. It, it averages them. It skips adding Alice in right there. So uh, my mistake there was to show you how easily it was to, to fix a formula. Let's look at a couple of text functions right now. Sometimes you get a list of uh, names or something that the capitalization is all all caps and you're, it's like you're yelling at people. And we want to make these maybe go into a form letter. So we want to make them into a proper uh, alphabetized format. So I can click in this cell. And if I go into my formulas here in my function library, 
I can find the proper command. And the proper command says which cell are we looking for. When I click on Bob, it says we're going to do A1, I hit enter, and it changes his name to where we're not yelling at him anymore. So I can grab this and drag this into the rest of these cells. I could also, let's shift these to the left, get rid of them. Excel has, uh, in recent years, added this feature. If I just start typing the text the way I want it, right next to it, it says, oh, hey, do you want to just do what you're doing here and repeat this all the way down? I can just hit my Enter key, and it does that for me automatically. Two more text functions I want to show you are called right and left. So I come back up here into my function library. I'm going to find the right, and it's going to ask me, what text do I want to extract from? So I want to extract from the text right here. And the number of characters I want, I just want the last two letters of his name. So I've got ob, and when I drag down with my fill handle, I also have ol, ed, and c. I do the same thing with just the first couple of letters of it. So I'm going to grab text, find the left. I want to pull from this column here, a2. The number of characters I want, maybe I just want the first two of their name. I click OK, and now I've just got Bo, Ka, T, and Al. So I can take out just parts of it. Uh, this might be handy if you're just making a list and you want to keep just the first couple of letters of someone's name so you can preserve their privacy if you're posting results for something. I don't know. It's just there for you to use. Uh, if you ever do use it, just let me know, please. I have never used them, actually. And as infrequently as I have used both the right and the left, there's one more command. It is called the mid command. I can pull out from the middle of a string of text. So I'm going to click on the bob here at A2. I'm going to start on character number 2. In this case, that's the O in his name. And I want to have just that one character. I could go 2, 3, 4. I'm going to just put one character. So this is just going to be pulling the second letter from each of these names. So there's my O. Pull this down with my fill handle. I have my A, my E, and my L. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, how to concatenate two cells together. So if I come in here to C2, and I'm going to go to my text functions, it's concat. It's going to put these cells together for me. So it asks me, which ones do you want to combine? I want to combine A2, and I want to combine B2, and when I click OK, it tells me Art Jones. What it didn't do for me was put a space between them, and I can fix that if I come in here in the formula, and after this comma, I'm just going to put a quote, a space, and a quote, and another comma, and so it's going to put this space in here, and when I hit enter, there's my space between Art and Jones. I could have changed that to make it a dash if I wanted to, or something else, but you see what I did there with just the space. So this works. I need to put that space back in there, just like this. Okay. Then I can use my fill handle and I can drag this down all the way. And of course, there's another way to do this. It's a little bit easier. Let's get rid of this. If I just start to type, Excel starts to figure out for me, hey, did you want to add this? Yes, I do. So I don't even have to use a concatenate anymore. So the last thing I need to show you for this standard is how to create and run a macro. I'll first off warn you the macros are pretty powerful and if you receive a worksheet with one in it, if you don't know who it's coming from, you probably don't want to run it because that becomes a hazard for your computer. So when you download a file off the internet, it's going to automatically disable any macros that are available in that particular document and it will ask you if you want to enable them. So let me show you how to write a macro. A macro automates things that you might do every month or every quarter in this case. So we have the quarterly sales data and the boss wants to see a report of this. So I'm going to go up to my developer tab. Now you may not even have the developer tab. Some things have to be turned on in Excel. If you do, we're going to go to the record macro and we're going to call this macro one. We're going to assign it to the key Q so I can hit control Q and that will make it uh, run this macro again. I click OK, and right now you can see that it is recording. So I'm just going to select my data. I'm going to go to my Insert tab. 
let's put in a chart let's find some recommended charts maybe I want it to look like this one I click OK the boss might want it to say something like quarterly sales and maybe he likes it in this kind of a style and that's probably good so I'm gonna go back to my developer tools here and I'm going to stop recording this macro now I have created a macro called control Q so that next month or next quarter all I have to do is click on here come over here do a control Q and it will run through the same steps that I just did only it created that macro here for April May and June so it automated the process for me it was really easy but again like I say if you don't know who you're getting the sheet from don't run their macros and that is it for standard four